Welcome to MicroStrategy. My name is Michael Hoffmann and I'm working as a senior sales engineer for MicroStrategy Germany. With the following video I want to give you a short demonstration of how to integrate MicroStrategy with Microsoft SharePoint Server 2010 based on web parts from an end-user perspective. It shows the wide range of flexibility in implementing MicroStrategy-enabled SharePoint sites with just a few mouse clicks. First I want to show you some examples of a web part integration with MicroStrategy. The two links in this SharePoint page are connected with two different MicroStrategy-enabled SharePoint pages. The first page shows a standard enterprise report with prompt functionality. You can use the wide range of report and document features within MicroStrategy SharePoint web parts. The second link navigates to a SharePoint page with MicroStrategy Web running in home portal mode. At this point we can use MicroStrategy Web within SharePoint like using MicroStrategy Web on its own outside from SharePoint. In this example we are running a MicroStrategy Flash dashboard within the web part. Now we want to look behind the scenes of web part integration with MicroStrategy. SharePoint pages structure SharePoint content. Therefore we have to implement SharePoint pages with MicroStrategy web parts to offer MicroStrategy content to an end user. Let's go ahead with a hands-on example. We want to implement our own SharePoint page with MicroStrategy content. This process is very easy for an end user and straightforward. The first thing we have to do is to define our new page. Let's add a title for the new page. In order to show MicroStrategy content in the SharePoint page, we need to add the MicroStrategy standard web part. This web part was previously deployed to the SharePoint metadata by a SharePoint administrator. So it is available to a SharePoint designer or end user within SharePoint. It's possible to configure a default behavior and content view of the MicroStrategy web part when a user integrates the web part in the SharePoint page. Later on, we will see the structure and configuration items of this XML configuration file. The SharePoint administrator is responsible for the configuration of this file. You can edit the MicroStrategy web part properties directly within the SharePoint page and you can override the default configuration that comes from the central configuration file. Now the MicroStrategy portal is running within the SharePoint page. In the next step we will navigate to the MicroStrategy report we want to display as the default view for this web part. We don't need to leave SharePoint in this situation. We can do all the necessary actions directly in our new web part. In order to show our selected report on the page we need to look up the unique identifier for this report. This UID has to be part of the web part configuration. We find all the relevant configuration items in this configuration menu that belongs to our MicroStrategy web part. In this menu we can select the display mode of the web part. In this case we decide to display a report as a graph and not a MicroStrategy document. Now we're done and our integration process has been completed.
We can find our new SharePoint page in the Site Pages folder and we can integrate the page to any other content page or site within SharePoint. The following example shows the process of how to configure the visibility of MicroStrategy toolbar items and menus in combination with the web part. We can use a set of parameters to configure these settings in the Properties menu. Now you can see that we have enabled all the MicroStrategy toolbar items that are available in MicroStrategy Web. In the next step we want to enrich our new MicroStrategy SharePoint page with additional functionality that comes from other web parts. SharePoint is a very flexible portal product. It's very easy to implement web part mashups to enrich the portal functionality. In this example, we want to add a noteboard to our page, so a user is able to comment the MicroStrategy performance report. A SharePoint administrator is able to set up MicroStrategy web part defaults in an XML configuration file that comes from MicroStrategy. This file offers the flexibility to define specific defaults a user is able to override in the web part properties menu. This highlighted section of the document shows the configuration of hidden toolbar items for MicroStrategy reports. In this section of your document you can define the default view for the web part. You can decide if you want to show the whole MicroStrategy web portal or only a specific document, for example. At the end of my presentation, I want to show you the step-by-step -step and how-to documentation for the deployment and usage of MicroStrategy web parts. This documentation is part of the documents that come with the installation of MicroStrategy Server. The examples explain in detail how to set up the web part environment and how to establish connectivity with MicroStrategy Web based on different security models. I want to thank you for your attention and wish you all the best.